All right, hi there, my name is Ian Moss, I'm here to Jesus Wide, and I'm here today with Jeff Hunker and Dave Willey from the band Satellite and Science. Say hello, guys. How you doing? Good to be here. Awesome. Now, before we get on to talk about your new record, Tanks, which is out now, we'll get to know you guys a little bit first. So if you could kind of take it in turns to tell us about how you became a Christian, how, yeah, how, how, you got, how you got involved with Satellites and Science and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been a Christian uh, most of my life. Uh, I was baptized when I was 13. My, my parents, um, they, uh, they grew me up in the church, um, and uh, I've, I've always kind of been going uh, to whatever youth groups I could and going to church with my family, and um, so that's been pretty much most of my life. Uh, I think that Christianity is kind of a, a journey, and so um, there's been definitely different points in my life um, where I think I... I made uh, my beliefs uh, my own instead of just what my, my family taught me about. I, I realized the things that they talked about being true and, and realized um, I grew, I think, in my relationship over the years. And I think that's a, something that happens most of the time. Um, but that's kind of kind of how I became Christian, my, my family. Cool, cool. Uh, Dave, do you want to have a, to have a crack at that? My, my story is actually pretty similar to Jeff's. My parents were children's pastors. Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, I grew up in the church and accepted Christ at uh, a young age. I was baptized uh, around I think it was 11, um, and uh, then yeah, it's been a, a period, uh, different periods of uh, growing in Christ and making uh, not just what my parents believe and what they've taught me, but making those things my own. Um, and so yeah, it's it's been a journey. And satellites, uh, you know, we started satellites back in the day um, through Craigslist. Um, it was originally just me and started writing some music with a producer named Rusty Bennington. Um, and then kind of through that, I put a Craigslist ad out because uh, we had a deal with Word Records. Um, had a bunch of people come audition. Um, our old drummer, Jonathan Dimmel, uh, was one of those main guys that came and, uh, um, and auditioned. And, uh, he ended up being a part of the band, and Dave actually grew up, or, uh, Dave and Jonathan grew up together since they were like little, going to church and, um, and being on the worship teams and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, and so that's how Dave got involved in being a bass player um, at the time. Uh, he was like, man, I know this guy that might be a perfect fit. And Dave came out on a tour with us, and it really was a perfect fit. So we, we, I called him up one day. I was like, hey, you want to be in a band? And he went on couch of mine for a while and yep, yep. so you know, yep and now we're still together all these years later so <laughs> all right so you, you spent a lot of time together so what's what's kind of each other's most annoying annoying trait what what really winds you up about each other <laughs> Ooh, okay all right <laughs> most annoying trait i'll let you go first uh i know about it. okay uh well jeff and i also we, we work together at, at our, our church um, and I would say my uh, my most frustrating trait of Jeff's is that he will say that he needs me for something, and then will proceed to do something else for about a half an hour before he actually needs me. <laughs> that does, and it, it, it hurts me. that does happen. That does happen. <laughs> um, bring I, it on. I think, bring it on. I, th I think that. Um, this is a this is a good and, and bad trait of Dave's, but um, Dave is, is stubborn, um, and uh, I think it's good sometimes because I think uh, he helps pull better things out of me because he's stubborn. But sometimes when you're on the road um, and you're in a van, um, it's not it's not my favorite thing in the world. So we've had we've had our you know brotherly arguments about things uh, many a times, but but I would say that more often than not, Dave brings out better from me because of those kind of things. So. It's a little bit of oh. risky with that iron sharpening iron thing. Yeah, there is. That happens. Well, that was a nice way of phrasing that negative, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so what's the story behind the name Satellite of Science? How did you come up with that name? Yeah, um, there's actually two folds to that story. Um, there's the first story that I was on the phone with a friend of mine. And I was uh, saying the most ridiculous things I could say possible together, um, trying to find a band name. 
And when I said satellites and sirens, he stopped laughing. He was like, I think that's it. So that's kind of where that came from. But then knowing that, you know, we're in the, the Christian industry and there's, there needs to be some sort of an idea behind that, uh, we started thinking about what that really meant. And um, satellites are something that send information out, and sirens are something that get people's attention. And that's kind of how we see ourselves as Christians. We've got a message and something to say when we get people's attention and say it. So. Cool, cool. Now, when you're writing music or coming up with new songs, do you have any kind of musical in, um, influences from other artists? From yeah, um, we have a lot of different influences. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite bands, and I think probably where I was pulled things from would be uh, the band Jimmy and Will. Um, I, uh, I've loved that band for a long, long time. And uh, I think melodically and um, even some of the ideas and stuff, I, I feel like I kind of tend to lean a little more towards what they do and some stuff. Um, we're a little more a little more pop than rock than, than they are, but um, but I can definitely see it sometimes. Even in my stage show, like how I perform, I can see Every once in a while, I'll see a video and be like, yeah, that looks kind of like what Jim Atkins does. Mm -hmm. so, but that would be one for me. And then the 80s music. I grew up, uh, my brother was a teenager in the 80s. And so um, I remember just being with him and hearing, you know, Pet Shop Boys and um, Information Society and Brand Room and all that kind of stuff. I remember hearing a lot of that, that kind of music growing up. And so, it's still even to this day like brings back a lot of memories for me, and so I kind of lean towards those sounds and, and that type of thing. What about you? Yeah, I uh, I really enjoy the band Radiohead, which uh, we, we don't have much that sounds like that, much, but I think they're they're just sort of doing weird things with music. I, I don't like and then uh, as far as uh, adrenaline is concerned, uh, they're in the uh, Cool, cool. Now, Jeff, you kind of just mentioned the Satellites and Science live show. What what can fans expect from a from a Satellites and Science live show if they come and see you live? Yeah, we're... we're yeah, really <laughs> um, we've never been a, a huge production band, um, so we've always tried to figure out, like, what it is it on stage to keep people's attention because we don't have a bunch of flashing lights. Um, and we just so, have us. Yeah, we just have us. We are the flashing lights. So so sometimes we'll have flashlights on stage. Yeah, no, I'm just no, no. Um, but uh but yeah we so we try to we try to just think about like what is it what are things that we can do there to keep people's attention. So um, we are, are known to you know throw a guitar across the stage um, to the other guy or um, Dave will pull one of his cymbals off of the, the stand and he'll run out to the front of the crowd and play the, the cymbal in front of the crowd. Or um, We love going into the crowd, so that's another thing we like to do, is just kind of getting out there with them and um, being crazy. Uh, handstands. Handstands, hanging upside down from rafters. Yeah. That's possible that will happen. Yeah. There's this exposed to be upside down. Yeah. Just, uh, and then we like to, and I think this is some of, um, of Dave's radio head, um, but we like to, to set up strange little stations with, with different pedals or sounds or something that we can kind of go to in certain moments of a, of a concert and bring something weird, um, whether that's, um, I've, I've used a, a mic that's running through a tremolo pedal so that you can get kind of that, that choppy um, kind of vocal part. Um, we've done some of that stuff before. Um, we love synths, so setting up a little synth station where, where you can go over and get some crazy sounds off of a, um, a chaos pad or whatever. We, we like to do different kind of things like that. We enjoy the noise. Yes. <laughs> Got to love a lot of noise. Right, well, we're here today to talk about your new album, Tanks, which is out now. So um, we're going to start off with the easiest question first. Which is your favorite track of the new album? Yeah, um, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it was said, said a little bit tongue in cheek there, a little bit tongue in cheek. <laughs> um, All right, now choose a child. Yeah, yeah. Dave, you choose first. No. Um, uh, I have different favorites for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, so that's kind of a- How about, how about so you can say your, your top three then? Top three, okay. Okay, that works. Uh, okay, so uh, for me, that'd be pretty easy then. Uh, chasing photos would be one of my favorites. Um, and that's kind of a personal thing. Um, that song I feel like really pulled me out of my comfort zone. Uh, I did some different stuff vocally than I've ever done on, on a track before. Um, and so I think that, that kind of the, the memory of, of building that song and then vocally some of the stuff that I did on it, I feel like that kind of, kind of brings a special place to my heart for that song. Um, Waste Some Time is definitely one that, that is, means a lot to me. Um, that's one I, I wrote for my wife. Um, and so that's one reason that's a big song for me. Um, and then I would say, uh, I would say Old Souls. I just, I really like that song, so. Um, for me, I think uh, uh, my, my favorite song to just listen to because it just makes me feel good um, would be the, the owner hey. That, that song just makes me want to drive around with it on repeat. And I hate repeating songs. So it's <laughs> weird that I have it, that information. Um, as far as uh, my contributions to the record, I, I, I really enjoyed uh, Control. It was a, a really challenging song for me to record. Uh, it was just a really challenging part. Who we are um, also. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, what was the thinking behind the album title of Tanks? Why did you come up with that name? Yeah, I think uh, one of the main things. Um, this, this is kind of funny. When I, when I was sitting down working on uh, on songs um, before we even started writing completely, I wrote out a bunch of names of songs that I thought would catch people's attention. Um, and Tanks is actually one of those. Uh, and so I didn't know how exactly at the time that was gonna work or how I would be able to make that into a song that made any sense at all. Um, but I just felt like the, the idea of, of Tanks and, and what that song, uh, that name, I feel like that grabs somebody's attention. I, I would see something like that and be like, what the heck is that all about? So I don't wanna, I don't wanna listen to it. So that was kind of the idea uh, behind making the record and, and the, the song um, Tanks was just kind of that. I think that'll get people's attention. Cool, cool. Now, what, what's the response been like to the album so far? How have fans reacted to it? Yeah, um, it seems like people are loving it. Um, the, the reviews are really good. Um, and then just from from our, our diehard fans and all that kind of stuff, it, it seems like this is um, becoming one of their favorite records pretty quickly. Um, I think that this this record successfully kind of pulled some of the old stuff that people liked about Satellites and Sirens and kind of mixed it with the new stuff a little bit to, to make a, a record that that left those people satisfied that really liked our beginning stuff uh, and liked kind of the band feel of, of Satellites and Sirens, but still the, the people that left the pop side of it that was more uh, on the record one noise, like I feel like it had enough of both of those things on this record to keep everyone happy. So it seems like people really love it. My mom loves it. <laughs> <She's really laughs> awesome. Yeah, kid, kids love it too. That's what that's what I've been hearing. We have a have a lot of like families in our church that'll come up and be like, because like we had a CD release show here a couple weeks ago, and um, and so they're like, my kid won't let me take your CD out of the CD player. It's been, been weeks, and all I get to have to do is listen to you guys on my drives everywhere. So, like, yeah, that's fine with us. <laughs> oh, I, I feel really sorry for you. <laughs> <Yeah, we're there. laughs> um, if there was one message that you, you'd want listeners to take away from listening to the album, um, what would it be? Yeah, um, I, I feel like um, we just really tried to make good music. And, and I feel like um, this was a, a, I want people to take away that um, that Christian music can be great music, um, that it can be uh, encouraging, um, that it can be songs about your, your loved ones. We can write love songs as Christians and 
um, and that we can kind of think outside of the box a bit. Um, I think that's kind of what I'd like people to take away from this record, that that we don't have to fit inside of a, a specific box. We don't have to write specific songs, but we can we can make great art and, and, um, and be happy about it and, and be okay with putting that out there. Um, and then just kind of from the idea of, um, you know, kind of like tanks, I, I just, I would like people to, it seems like we're, we're in a really crazy world right now where um, because of social media and all that kind of stuff, there's just a lot of hate and a lot of Christians trying to be right. Um, and, and so I would just like people to, people to listen to this. This record's fun. Like it's, it's a roll down your window, like, you know, listen and, and have a good time type of record, but it also makes you think and hopefully it makes people um, kind of think about loving our enemies instead of uh, just fighting against them. Cool, cool. Now, one of my favorite songs in the album is a song called Who We Are. Um, could you kind of share the message behind that particular song? Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's similar to what I was saying about just you know we are called to love, um, and, and I think that together we are stronger as believers. Um, and if we can all come together and, and if we can really truly as a, a group of, of believers be love to our world, I think that there's going to be a lot of change that can happen. Um, and so that's kind of that that idea of of what we do. We want people to know that we're about love and that if together we can, we can make a difference with that. Awesome. Now, as, as you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, you wrote Waste Some Time for your wife, Jess. Um, what was her reaction to, to hearing the song for the first time? Yeah. Um, this I, record, did, I, I did you earn some brownie points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. It earned me some brownie points. Um, this, is a, this is a fun record to do for one reason. Like My, my wife actually, she kind of just kept herself out of it. Um, I, I've had a, a, a studio at the house, and we did a lot of the record there. Um, and so I, I was working late nights um, working on these songs, and, and she kind of just kept her distance from the whole record um, until it was completed. Um, and so she knew that there were some songs about her or, or something that would connect to her, um, but she hadn't really heard them. And so when she finally got a chance to listen to this record and, and hear who we are, or uh, hear Waste of Time, um, yeah, she she loved it. Um, it. It means a lot to her, and I can tell like uh, when we're around, you know, friends or, or her mom or something like that, and she's she's excited. Yeah, like, hey, did you hear the song that Jeff wrote about me yet? Like, you gotta hear this. So um, I can tell that she she really loves the song. Cool, cool. Now there's a, there's a song on the record called um, "Living the Dream," where you talk about all the kind of sacrifices you have to make on the road, but you're still living your dream. What's the hardest thing about being out on the road? <laughs> one through one, one way, one way. Family, yeah. Being away from family is one of the hardest. Yeah, that's the toughest thing. And, and you know, we we did this for we did touring for a long time, and, and uh, a big portion of that we either one of us had wives or anything like that. So, um, so it was a lot easier at that time. Uh, but when we get married, and um, we were gone as much as we were. Uh, my first year of marriage, um, we were gone three weeks out of the month, you know, pretty much, you know, pretty consistently out of the year. Um, so it's just it's just tough being away from that. It's tough being away from uh, friends too. Um, you get back home and, and you want to take some time to relax. And you want to you want to see people and and then being in Nashville, like, like those people you want to see are probably gone because they're on tour somewhere. Or you know that kind of thing. So it's it's a it's it's hard to find a good balance um, from the road life to being back home. Cool, cool. Now, are there any kind of plans for music videos from the project for any of your tracks? Yeah, we're uh, we're hoping to do one for Tanks. Um, we're working out some ideas for that. Um, and our idea is to to have something media wise for most of the songs. So. Um, whether that be lyric videos or actual music videos, um, we've got some ideas. Some of them are a bit lofty, so we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to see if it's something that we can pull off or not. Um, but yeah, they'll definitely be some videos. Cool, cool. Now you you also worked with uh, um, Ronnie Petakovich and Joel Vaughn on on this album. What was how did those songs how did both of those songs come about? Yeah, um, so 
uh, Ronnie is actually uh, this this kid's a he's a talent. Um, we did a lot of this record at Grand Canyon University. Um, we checked a lot of the drums and vocals there. Um, and through Grand Canyon, um, there is a uh, worship arts program. Um, and Ronnie was one of the kids that we met through the worship arts stuff. Um, he actually uh, did kind of like an internship here uh, at the church that Dave and I are at. Um, and uh, so we met him through that. Um, and it just happened to be that we were we were working heavily on the record at that time. Um, and so I kind of like, Came alongside Ronnie and just kind of helping him because he wants to be an artist and that kind of thing. And so we ended up uh, getting together to, to write a song together um, for the record and ended up being really happy with it. Um, we did it with uh, Kurt Anderson um, and then Ronnie uh, and then we and, uh, wrote a hey. uh, That was the first song that we did. And it just came out really well. So I just kept on giving him a shot like, hey, I'm going to write again tonight. And he'd come over and we'd sit until midnight. And, Workout songs and um, Ronnie ended up writing almost every song on the record with me, um, which I, I think is a really cool thing. Uh, one for for him um, to just kind of kind of build and see, kind of see what the music industry is like and what putting a, re a record together is like. But also for us, I think it brought a new kind of voice to the table um, that I think helped uh, really push some of the songs to be what they are. Um, and then Joel, uh, he's on Dream Records with us and. Um, you know, life, life being an artist, um, sometimes you, you meet bands on the road or you, you become semi-friends with, with other artists. Um, but I would say Joel is one of those guys that, that really became like a legit, like real friend. Like, we both uh, started talking because of the industry, we had questions about some stuff and wanted to talk to some things. Um, and then we text all the time. He's one of my, my, my closer friends now that um, that's from the road, and so I, I brought him out to the church here um, to uh, to help me worship when we've been. And uh, while he was here, uh, we just sat down and ended up working on that song enough, um, and uh, it just felt like a perfect fit for his voice. And um, we helped co-write that song. And so yeah, that's kind of how that came together. Awesome. Now, my my favorite lyrics from your album come from a song called Stereo. Um, where it says, and shouldn't we be setting the trends? We're just playing pretend. Shouldn't we be louder than them? Let's take back the stereo. Could you kind of elaborate on what you're trying to say through those lyrics uh, and the message you're trying to convey? Because I know it's something you're very passionate about. Yeah. Um, might get us in trouble a little bit. But <laughs> uh, I've always kind of seen us as Christians as, as like, I, I believe that we should be the ones that are setting the trends. Um, we should be the people that are, are taking the, the chances and we should be the ones that are um, trying new things. Uh, instead, I feel like we, a lot of times we fall back on whatever it is, not just music, but I think we fall back on what is it that the world's doing and how can we turn that into something Christian. Um, and I think we should be the opposite. We should be um, just being creative and letting God lead us in, in ways and, and hopefully whatever we do, the, the, the rest of the world would see and go, okay, how do I do that? You know, what is that and what, why are they doing it and why are they so good? And, and so I feel like this is kind of a plea to those artistic people um, that, are, that are in the Christian world that, that we just we do our thing, you know? And, and that doesn't mean that we, we sit by these rules that we have to, um, you know, paint this picture by these rules or, or we need to write a song by these rules, but we just do whatever it is that we feel like God's leading us to do. Um, and, and it hopes um, that we would start pushing that as a, as a Christian world and industry that we would start uh, seeing those people that are trying to uh, to do something different and that we get behind them instead of you know, doing carbon copy stuff or something else. I, I couldn't agree with what you said anymore. <laughs> a good example of that, I feel not, not intentional, but, um, but I, I think those songs are only three years ago, I feel like they're, they're doing a lot of things different um, in a lot of things, really unique, that aren't following just trends that the world are, are throwing at them. They're really doing something that's unique. And of course, it's 
made plays and plays and plays and plays. So it's, it's really cool. I just happen to be able to do that. <laughs> Definitely agree with that. Shout out to Hillsong Young for breaking mm -hmm. them off. Um, now, we're, we're kind of, last kind of big question before we get a few silly questions to wrap up. We're currently in the kind of era of streaming music and, and what have you, and artists having to find a different way to make money. Um, do you think artists should just accept that this is where we are and kind of find those other ways to make money, or should they should they be fighting against it and kind of snubbing all the streaming sites and what have you? I personally hate streaming. What are what are your thoughts on that subject? Yeah, uh, I I would say it's uh, it is very challenging for uh, ourselves and the um, to to snob uh, such a massive part of the industry as much as I, I wish we could get around streaming sites because yes it does it does hurt uh, sales for the records and whatnot because you're basically giving stuff away for free stuff that you work very hard on that you spend more money into uh, to get a professional you uh, it makes it really difficult for the artist. But um, honestly, I feel like the, the people that actually have the ability to make the income so that they can do it in the higher level artists should be the ones that are saying enough is enough. If you force people to pay money for records, it would be, it would be nice. Yeah, it's it seems like um, you know I don't know many other industries that you, you pour money into a product that doesn't suck. Like it's there's not a lot of other things out there. I, I feel like it's almost a government type of thing that's got to come down to, to change things um, because there are, there is there's such a mass difference of of excitement for um, for those streaming sites because there's the, the big artists that get you know, tons of streaming. There's the middle artists that get minimal streaming. But then there's also a ton of young artists that they get an opportunity to be on something that they normally wouldn't have the opportunity to do. And so it's like we've got to find we've got to find a way to get everybody on the same page um, to to kind of get rid of, of that streaming idea or, or how how we can work that out. And it's just a it's a tough thing. I'd be on board if everybody, if we get everybody on board. <laughs> but, but that's a that's a that's a tough thing to do. Um, but, yeah. Just just a little tiny bit of a tough task that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. Like I I struggle with it. I've really struggled with it with this record in particular, um, just because I, I poured you know I poured so much into this record um, from the time that it took. Um, the money that it took, um, and and I feel like we put something together that I'm, I'm really proud of, um, and so it's it's tough to know that like we're we're just handing something out there. Um, I think we've got to as as business people too. We've got to we've got to think about different ways of making money um, because the industry is different. Um, so there's got to be kind of a straddle. Like you've got to. Think business wise and go figure out how to continue to make money so you can make your craft. Uh, but it's also it'd be great if we could find a way to get people to come together and, and, and stop it somehow. Uh, but again, it's got to take everybody to do that. Yeah, because we, we could totally do that. We could absolutely do that. And then we just make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of what it's <laughs> tough. Is that, that is a good thing. Oh, I, th I think this would be a good point to say, go and buy their new record, Tanks. Go and buy it now. Don't stream yeah. it, go and buy it. <laughs> um, so, uh, as we kind of wrap this interview up, so we've got to let you go, sadly. A couple of very quick questions kind of get to know you a bit better as well. If there was one food that you could eat for the rest of your life, it wouldn't affect your health or anything, what would it be? I'd say Mexican food. That's, that's my favourite. I love Mexican food. Uh, just big old burritos. <laughs> <laughs> big old burritos. Um, okay. <laughs> that's, 
Um, I, I would say sushi, man. I, I could eat sushi for the rest of my life. Okay, I've just gone off you a little bit there, Dave. <laughs> what about you? Uh, that, I don't know. Um, flapjack. Flap what? Flapjack. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All pizza, all pizza. Let's go, let's go, yeah, let's go pizza. Let's <laughs> a hybrid of the two. Mm. Um, <laughs> what, what's the most embarrassing album that, that you own? <laughs> embarrassing album that we own. That's that's a good one. That's a great question. I feel like oh I know. I don't know which one it is, but I know in a stack of CDs, Ed and Buddy give me a bunch of really awesome CDs in, in that stack. I didn't realize until I got home that there was a Britney Spears record. And, <laughs> and it's it's an early Britney Spears record. I don't listen to it though. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Creed, my only person. I think I, I think I still have that CD in my house somewhere. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I have to have a talk when we get off. Of that. <laughs> um, is there a certain Bible verse that's impacting your life hard? Uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, only one. Um, I probably I, I always go back to it, but uh, Hebrews six nineteen, hope is like an empty to your soul, should be steadfast. Um, I think that's always been been one that's uh, connected to me. Um, to to never lose hope and to remember where hope comes from, um, and that in any situation, that's something that can be anchor us. Cool, cool. Now, um, is there an artist out there who would be your dream collaboration? Who you just you just have to get on one of your records? Yeah, I have, t I have two. I have two. One of them, one of them could be possibly like it's one that's not completely out of the realm of maybe being possible at some point. Because uh, we have a, a buddy of ours whose brother, or no, sorry, he works for. Um, Tom from Jimmy Wills, uh, the guitar player, his brother. Um, and so we actually have a connection to them. So that's possible that maybe we could collaborate with them. Yeah, that would be something. Uh, but for me, my dream one would be probably Ryan Tedder. Um, I just uh, really look up to that guy as a, a songwriter. Um, I feel like he's revolutionary. I mean, every record um, still seems to, to be pop. In a way that doesn't feel pop, which I think is, is pretty awesome. So for me, that would be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. If I could have, if I, I could collaborate with any member of the band, that would be any Cool, cool. Now, last question. Um, how can how can we at Jesus Wine and all of our readers be praying for satellites and signs in the coming few months? Yeah, um, I would say uh, just continued prayer for uh, for the record uh, and that people would, would continue to grab a hold of it. Um, and uh, you know, we just we just really pray that, that we just want this record to be you know, we, we really feel like we, we were taught on it and we put something um, out that we really excited about it and proud of and I feel like it's going to connect with people so we just need people to do it um, so just continue to pray for, for that and then uh, there are those rabbits to, to continue to open up those for us um, we're just we're open for that too but I we'll just pray that, that those things happen awesome now uh, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today it's, it's been an absolute pleasure yeah absolutely yeah. this has been fun it's been, it's been great um, that's Satellites and Sirens, that's Jeff Hunker, that's Dave Woolley. The new album, Tanks, is out now, and you need to go and get it, because it is, it's just awesome. You just, you need to go and buy it. Don't stream it, buy it. <laughs> um, I'm Ian Moss, I'm your Shizzy, so I'll get plugged in, and God bless. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.